In this screencast, we're going to introduce you to fluid mechanics by describing some of the characteristics of a fluid. We're going to start with what is a fluid? So most people, if asked what a fluid is, they would think of liquids such as water. Other people think of both liquids and gases. However, the real definition is that a fluid is something that deforms continuously, and that's one of the important words, when acted upon by another important word, a shear stress. So let's start by defining that. What is a shear stress? So this is a tangential force which acts parallel to a surface. So let's look at an example of that. So let's say here we have some fluid. The tangential force or shear stress will act in this direction on the fluid. And we call this shear stress tau. So let's see why it's important that we call it continuous. Pretty much everything deforms. However, a solid deforms to a certain point and then it stops. In contrast, a fluid deforms continuously. And what we call that deformation is just flow. So why is this? Why do fluids deform continuously while solids don't? And the reason for that is what's known as molecular spacing. In other words, the distance between molecules. And if you look at the difference between the spacing in solids versus liquids and gases, you can see that the molecular spacing is quite different. Let's start with a solid. So here you can see the closely packed structure of the molecules in a solid. However, now let's look at a liquid or a gas. So as we saw in the closely packed structure of the solid, the molecules are really not free to move. However, here we have a liquid and you can see these intermolecular spaces which allows the fluid molecules to move more easily. And you can see this even more so in a gas where there are large spaces between the molecules, making the ability for these molecules to move even greater. In addition, because of this spacing, or in terms of the solids, lack of spacing, the intermolecular forces between the molecules and fluids are smaller, again leading to more ease of movement. So let's sum up the differences. We'll start with deform continuously. Again, this is how we define a fluid. A solid does not deform continuously. However, a liquid or a gas does. Next, we'll look at large molecular spacing. So again, if we look at the pictures, what we see in these three diagrams is that solids do not have large molecular spacing. However, liquids do and gases do even more. We talked about small intermolecular forces, again caused by this spacing. 
And what we find is that solids have larger intermolecular forces, whereas liquids, and in particular gases, have small intermolecular forces. And finally, something we haven't talked about is compressibility. Are these systems compressible? Solids are not compressible, but here's where you have the difference, even though liquid and gases are both fluids, liquids are not compressible while gases are. And this leads to the differences between gases and liquids, even though they are both considered fluid. Another characteristic of fluids is that we have to look at fluids as a continuum. In other words, properties in a fluid vary continuously. And what this allows us, therefore, to do is we can determine an average property. This is because the volume of a fluid or the volume of the fluid molecules is large compared to the average distance between the molecules. For example, if we look at the spacing between molecules for a liquid versus a gas, so the spacing between molecules is about 10 to the minus 6 millimeters for a liquid, and for a gas, it's like 10 to the minus 7 millimeters. So if we look in one cubic millimeter of fluids, then the number of molecules range from 10 to the 18th all the way to 10 to the 21st. So their volume is going to be very large compared to the spacing between the molecules. Therefore, we can treat the fluid as a continuum and say that properties such as pressure or velocity vary continuously throughout the fluid.